Hey guys, welcome back to the Timberforge, and today I'm going to be going through how to use the play sound command, and I'm going to go pretty in detail to cover everything that exists for the play sound command. I was going to release a custom blocks video, however there are some changes being made with how armor stands are displaying their models, so I'm just going to wait a little bit to release that video. So let's get started. In order to create a play sound command, of course start by typing slash play sound. After that, there is a list of parameters that you need to enter into the command. The first one, of course, is sound, and I'm going to go more into detail for each of these. So we have sound, and then we have the source, then we have the targets that will receive the sound, we have the origin or location of the sound, and those are the only ones that are required, and you have three extra parameters that you can put in for volume, pitch, and minimum volume. Now I'm going to go through each of these parameters one by one. So first of all, to get the list of sounds, go to the link in the description below which will have a list of Java Edition sound values. So the sounds that are played in game through the play sound command are actually sound events. And events often have different sounds that are actually used. Unfortunately, you can't play individual sounds that are part of a sound event, you can only play the sound event itself. So this is the list of sound events, all of these on the left side here, not the individual sound files. If you want to select individual sound files, you will have to create it through your own resource pack. Currently I have an example of that in my Mandalorian pistol video if you want to check that out, where I added a custom laser sound for the pistol. If you want a list of sound events, you'll have to use this section on the left side and choose from that list. And as you can see, it's pretty long, but it's split into sections such as ambient, block, and entity. In game, you can also start by just typing the beginning portion. So let's say you want some sort of bat sound. Then you could just type entity.bat and then just scroll through the list. Or if you want to look at all the entity sounds that are available, you could just type in entity and scroll through it. This section is pretty self-explanatory. Let's say for the sake of example that you chose entity.player.levelup. And now what you can choose is your sound category. And these sound categories line up with the sound categories in the sound menu. So if I play a sound in the block menu at my position and to myself, you'll be able to hear it properly. Then when I go to music and sounds and turn blocks all the way down, you'll notice it's very faint. So the source or sound category is basically just to make sure that your sounds are adjusted properly depending on the player's sound settings. After you choose your sound source or sound category, then you could do your target selector. And the target selector basically determines who can actually hear the sound. And this has to be a player, so you either use at A, at S, or at P. You could also use player names, but I wouldn't recommend that, and they would have to be online in order for the command to work, obviously. So if a player is not selected by the target selector, then they will not be able to hear the sound no matter what. Here's an example here. If I constrain the targets to all players who have a tag of a bunch of gibberish, which I do not, when I press this button, nothing will happen because I am not a target selector. It does not matter that the sound is playing directly here and has a really high volume. It also works the other way around. Just because I am selected by the target selector at A does not mean that I will actually be able to audibly hear it. If the sound is too low, but you're still selected by the target selector, it doesn't matter and you still won't be able to hear it. Now the last required parameter for the play sound command is the set of three coordinates for the origin of the sound. And this could either be straight up coordinates like 10, 20, 30, or it could be relative cardinal coordinates such as tilde, 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 and then I could just set it like five blocks up. Or you could also do vector coordinates with these upward caret thingies just to specify it. It basically works like any other coordinate system and just sets where the origin of the sound plays from. And as you expect, the sound gets quieter as it gets farther from the origin. Now I'm going to move on to the other three parameters, which is volume, pitch, and minimum volume. These ones can get a little more confusing. And in order to test them, I'm going to be running them off of this armor stand. So I'm going to do execute. At, and then I'm just going to tab in the UUID of that armor stand. Then I'm going to run the play sound command for entity.player.levelup. I'm going to do it through player to all players at the current position, which is going to be at the armor stand's position. Let's start off with volume, which is the first of the three optional parameters. By default, this is 1. 
And what this means is that it has a range of 16 blocks. So if I play it outside of the range, you won't hear it. But if I move within 16 blocks of the armor stand where we're playing the sound from, you're going to hear it very faintly. I'm not sure if you're able to hear that, but the sound is playing. And if I walk just like a couple blocks forwards, you'll be able to hear it pretty clearly. Now, if you set this below one, the range doesn't actually decrease, only the volume decreases. So if I set this to 0.001, the range is still technically 16, but it's just too quiet to hear that far away. So if I set this to something like 0.01, you'll be able to hear it if I'm close by, and you won't be able to hear it if I'm like over here, or let's say over here even though this is technically within range, and I'll tell you why that's important later on. Now, if I set the volume to something over one, what happens is that default range of 16 is being multiplied by the volume. So if I set it to two, then the range is now 16 times two, which is 32. So if I go all the way out to 32 here, you'll notice this is the extent of the new volume. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but you can hear it and it's very faint. But if I go over here, there's absolutely no sound. So values less than one will not technically change the range, but it will make it quiet enough where you can't actually hear it. The default value is one and values over one multiplied by 16 gets you your new range. Also something that you probably should know is that if your volume goes higher than one, the volume will never actually get louder. It just increases the range. So standing at the origin with a volume of one will not be any quieter than standing at the origin of the sound with a volume of a million, because all it does is expand the range from there. So it will stay louder for longer, but the maximum sound volume will not actually increase at all. Now let's get to pitch, which is the second optional parameter at the end of the play sound command. Now pitch is not as complicated as minimum volume or volume, but it has a couple quirks with it. So the allowed range is from zero to two, and it could be any decimal in between the two. So you could go like 0.1, for example, which gets a lower and slower sound, or you could do two for a shorter and higher pitched sound. Now something kind of weird with it is 0.1 is the same as 0.5. So the effective range is really from 0.5 to two because anything below 0.5 just gets rounded back up to 0.5. So with that in mind, basically all you have to know for pitch is that you have to choose a number between 0.5 and two and just mess around until you hear something that you like. All right, finally, we're going to get to minimum volume. And minimum volume is a really weird one. It sets the sound for players who are outside of the normal hearing range, which we specified in the volume. So if your volume is one or below, the range is 16. And if it's above one, it's just 16 times whatever your volume was. And this gets especially weird for lower than one volumes because the range is technically 16, even though you won't be able to hear it. But it's better if I just show it to you. So if I am going to go closer than 16 blocks, but I set the sound to something really low. So let's say I'll set the volume to 0.1 or no, let's say 0.05. And then I set the pitch to whatever. And then minimum volume, if I set this to one, you'll notice that it's faint here. And that's because it's not actually using the minimum volume until I'm outside of the range. And for less than one, that's 16. If I go right at 16 blocks, you'll be able to hear that it's loud. But if I go closer, it gets quieter. And even if you use it at a volume which is one or greater, so let's say I'll set it to two, you'll still get some weird stuff around the borders of your sound uh, range. So my volume is two, which means 32 is the max volume. So if I go over here, You'll notice it's faint, but then if I go farther, which should by logic be quieter, it's going to get louder. Fixing the weirdness from minimum volume is actually pretty easy. So the way that it works right now is that there's the origin and then it starts at the maximum volume and then it slowly goes down until it's basically inaudible by the time it reaches the maximum range set by volume. And then after it exceeds this range, it goes on to minimum volume. And the issue is that minimum volume is obviously above zero. So it goes from a higher number, decreases to zero, and then increases again, which is not what we want. 
What we want is once it hits minimum volume, let's assume it's 0.1 for the sake of example, we want it to continue to be minimum volume instead of going all the way down to zero and then keep going. So all we have to do is make sure that minimum volume plays before the technical range of our original play sound and we could simply do that by adding another play sound command. So what I have here is my original play sound command with a range of 24 blocks. So I remove the minimum volume from here because this won't play until the range is exceeded, but we want it to play earlier than that to make sure it doesn't go all the way down to zero. So what I did was I added one that has a volume or range of zero, which is a 16 block range. So it's going to play before it gets all the way to the end of the 24 block range of the primary play sound command. And it is constantly playing a 0 0.05 minimum volume, which means that all of the volumes will be at least 0.05. You'll see that when it gets quieter, it never actually goes down to zero and then increases again. So you'll see it smoothly goes all the way down to minimum volume. And compare that to the original one where I had the 1.5 volume and 0.05 minimum volume. You'll see that it's not smooth at all. And it goes all the way down to where it's inaudible and then it goes back up again, which is definitely not what you want. So all you have to do to fix the problem is to separate it into two separate play sound commands. And if you really want to, you could also put in constraints onto the target selector just to make sure that it only plays one sound at a time. So let's say it only plays this within the 23 block range because after 23 blocks, it starts to diminish to zero. And then for the second play sound with the minimum volume, we could just do a distance of 23 blocks or more. And as you can see, it still works the same way where it's going to fade all the way down to the minimum volume and not go lower than minimum. I'm also going to quickly cover the stop sound command. So just type slash stop sound, and then you could select a player to stop all the sounds for if you want to do that. So if I play a music disc and then type slash stop sound at S, it will stop all of these sounds, including the disc. And you could also choose to specifically target categories. So if I just do stop sound all players record, you could put in multiple records. And when you activate this, it will disable all of those sounds. And you could also target specific sound events. So if I specifically target pig step, it will only stop that sound. So if I press this, you'll notice pig step stopped. And that's basically all there is to stop sound.